Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. That was our responsorial psalm. Here we are this morning. We are here doing the will of the Father, the will of God, to believe in him, to believe in his Son, and to follow him. Last week, we celebrated the solemnity of the baptism of Jesus Christ. And if you remember the readings, the voice of the Father was heard, saying, this is my beloved Son, listen to him. And after that, Jesus started his public ministry. Public ministry meaning what? He went out now to preach, to witness to the Father, and to tell the world who he was. And not only telling them he, that he is the Son of God, but he did all that through preaching and doing acts of mercy, preaching, healing, forgiving sins. That's what Jesus started. That's all we can read in the, in the Gospels about the life of Jesus, preaching about the kingdom of God, reminding the people the time is at hand. And dear friends, even as if you look at your own life, if you look at your own faith, you realize that you started somewhere. Some of us were catechized or baptized when we were young. Others, we were catechized when we were grown-ups. But in one way or the other, someone helped us to know God. It's not like they came just from heaven. No. Someone helped us to know God. Our families helped us to grow in faith. And indeed, all of us here this morning, God, we have known God through someone, through the church, through our families. And dear friends, that is the call to discipleship. All of us, we are gathered here this morning because we have seen the light of Christ. And I believe that is why even last week when we read the Gospel of St. Mark, telling the people that, yes, I'm not the Messiah, the one who is coming, even I'm not worthy to untie his sandals. John, in a way, showed his disciples where to go, and whom to go to. Just like all of us, through the sacrament of baptism and our faith, someone helped us to be who we are, to be Christians, to be Catholics. And I tell you, that's what we are celebrating this morning. And again, even after that, we hear in the gospel today, something else is also happening to John. He is telling his disciples, behold the lamp of God. When he sees Jesus walk by, he tells his, his disciples, that's the one. Behold the lamp of God. And his, his disciples understood. And they left him and they followed Jesus. Dear friends, those words that John uses, behold the lamp of God. Probably you hear them during Mass every Sunday. When the priest raises the bread, the, the, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Those words are derived from the words of John this morning. Meaning what? That Jesus is truly the Lamb of God. And the disciples understood that. And even us who sit here this morning, we understand that. And that is where our faith is built in. In the Word of God, in the sacrament, and more so in the realization that God created us. Just the way St. Paul is telling us. St. Paul tells us in our second reading, God created us for himself 
and also for ourselves. In other words, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. That mean, meaning what? That we belong to God, whether we want it or not. We are God's creatures, whether we believe in him or not. And in God, always he is there, waiting for us to turn back to him. And how do we do it? To turn back to God, doing what we are doing today. Also helping others to know God and to come closer to him. Those who have grandkids, those who have family members that do not know God, we may, it's not so much of being called to go and preach to them, but rather they can even learn about God through us, the little things we do for them, and also in inviting them, telling them, you know what? God loves you. You don't have to do much. God loves you. God is there. You are able to go through this because of him. We are all called to guide others closer to the Lord. And that is why we hear in the first reading, even Samuel, staying in the temple of the Lord the whole of his life, when God called, he could not recognize it was the voice of God. He needed someone to tell him, if he calls you again, tell him, Lord, here I am. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And that's what we have heard. Eli told someone, if he calls you again, that's how you are supposed to respond. And dear friends, that's our faith. All of us here, we have the faith because someone did something to us. And we should be grateful to our families, to our friends, those who brought us to faith. Grateful to them. And also re remember that we are also called to bring others to Christ. That's our call today. A vocation that we have and to be able to lead others closer to the Lord. We pray this morning, dear friends, we pray for our families. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are in hospitals. We pray for those who have um, different problems in life, that the good Lord may, may help them to turn back to him, to realize that, yes, even the difficult times they go through, he is always there. He never leaves us because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. God created us for himself and for ourselves. We are a children. So this morning, we pray and thank him for the gift of our faith. We thank him for the gift of our families. And we continue to pray for each other that the good Lord may build us and bring us closer to him. And as we listen to the readings the coming weeks, you realize that Jesus will, is now going out to preach. Don't forget, please re remember, read those readings every weekend and you realize how our faith is building in Jesus, the Son of God. Today, John tells us, behold, the Lamb of God. He is there. He loves us. No matter what happens in our lives, he loves us and we are called to turn to him and also to love him and to love one another as God has commanded us. May God bless you today and forever. Amen.